everyone, and welcome to another review here on the Kaiju Noir channel, where we will be discussing the latest film in the legendary MonsterVerse, that is Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire. And uh, here with me again today from the Minus One review, we have the one and only Grizzard, aka David Joshua Hernandez. How are you, David? Good, now that we finally pushed the other white dudes out of the SOS. <laughs> it's about damn just fucking the time. <laughs> the boys are the, the Latino boys are back in town, baby, which means, yes, we have brought Mr. Eight Arm Spidey, aka Spider Frank, aka Just Plain Old Frank, aka Frankie G in the his house here with us today. Holy shit, we back again. Also, talk about kicking on the white people. You just brought out the whitest shit you could ever say. <laughs> I mean, I'm out. I mean, what do you expect from the most whitewashed Mexican alive? Okay, you're very true. You were like border, you're borderline <laughs> sepia tone, my bro. It's it's true. It's like it, growing up, you know, and whenever like we would like my family would meet other like Mexican families in the community, you know, I'd be like, "Hello, how are you? My name is Andres," and they'd think I'd be putting on a voice, and they only for them to realize that is just how I speak. It's like <laughs> it, it's me, senor. Like no. <laughs> <I ain't that. laughs> So, anyways, we're here. It's me, Andres, a Manchichi doll brought to life. <laughs> I am the great. I'm the the the, the greatest uh, method actor alive. That is and this whole entire control. time I've been sounding like Antonio Banderas. I just never allowed anyone to listen to my real yeah, sexy please, voice. Please. It is too it is too dangerous to be heard by human ears. <laughs> One of my first French. encounters with Andres, I compared him to Casey Miller from South Park. Let's see who oh, who, who, who is Casey Miller. He was that kid that uh, he was trying out for the uh, the announcements with Carmen. Oh, the oh the the parody of Casey Kasem. Okay, now, yeah. he, dude, like that's another thing. Like other people have also compared my voice to like Casey Kasem. Like this is Casey Kasem here with the Radio Top Forty, reminding you to keep your feet on the ground and reach for the stars. He's not on the phone. Talking <laughs> about coming from an up tempo song and talking about a dead dog. I remember that <laughs> audio. <laughs> that's a good one. Where it's just the whole charade just drops and, and he just goes on a tirade about some yeah, some It's like the frozen request. peas. It's like it's like the frozen peas with um uh Orson, Orson Wells. Wells. <laughs> There's too much directing yeah. here. Yeah, we know a remote farm where Mrs. Buckley lives. <laughs> Their peas are grown. <laughs> it, yeah. Tell me frozen where peas. it says in July mm. and I'll go down it, on you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I, I I'm sorry, you've had a gonk. Jesus. <laughs> this is a lot of shit. <laughs> and now that I'm, and now that all anyways, anyone now yeah. that anyone who was legit interested in listening to us talk gush about his review, now let's finally get into it. So Yeah, bitchy, bitches. <laughs> so Stop, bitches. We saw a movie. A movie yeah. came out. We saw it. I guess it to fun. to start things off. Um, we since this is the first time we've had like us three specifically together for a MonsterVerse review, I guess I kind of want to go around and ask you guys what has been your general opinion on the MonsterVerse from 2014 to now. Uh, David, can you go first? It's crazy. We, the the SOS started because of the MonsterVerse. Indeed, we did. Uh, originally, back when it was just you, David, uh, you, yeah, you, Bill, Adam, and Dylan. You guys used to host a thing, a chat called World War G, where you would like speculate on what uh 2014 was going to turn out to be, and these chats, these podcasts would be like, I don't know, like two, three hours long, just speculating on like the barest minimum of information. And Dude, Bagan, he's coming. Fucking Bagan, man. Bagan bites. Rodan confirmed, guys. Oh, uh, back then we didn't call them podcasts. We just called them chats. Chats, exactly, yeah. Yeah, there they're was they're just round tables, round tables. Back, but nowadays, everyone has a podcast. Every single person who thinks they're somewhat funny like us all have hey, like <laughs> I I'm in, I work in podcasting I think I'm okay okay that's that's fine <laughs> even the monsterverse now has a podcast character Re oh that's true that's true which goes to yeah, show uh, is he though eh, I don't we can we'll discuss we'll get it. into we'll it. get into it 
But yeah, you're very right. Back then, back in the days, back when everybody and their mom had a podcast, it was just called, it, you guys just called them chats. <laughs> and that's yeah. what ultimately sort of formed the basis for what would become the SOS podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, what, are, what has been your thoughts uh, since those days, David? Ah. Uh... I mean, they've been roughly the same. I'm enjoying the MonsterVerse. I'm one of the few American fans that actually enjoys the MonsterVerse and doesn't uh, degrade it out of gatekeeping. How dare yeah, you? I, I, lo- I love watching you tear people apart in the comment section. It's fucking, it's brilliant. Yeah, because it makes no fucking sense. The MonsterVerse is following the same formula as the Showa era. It began as Are something they, dark though? and serious. Are they yes. really? Yes. Are you sure where about to, that? Where to find what? you, you little You sure about that? I'm gonna stab you. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll I'll, I'll give this uh, this preface to anyone listening. I Andres will most hates li- fun. I will most likely be the bad guy in this podcast, yes. and you know why? Because Yay. you need me. You need me so you can point your fingers and say that's the bad guy, and, and say, "Ew, look at that little stinky man over there. He probably sniffs his own farts." <laughs> Ah, even the Mexicans have seen uh, Scarface. He loves it. He thinks Hideaki Anno's a genius. Look at him. <laughs> yes, I'm caressing my my, my fucking Ch- Ch- Go- Solo Chagokin gunbuster that you sold me. Yeah, you're welcome, you little bitch. <laughs> Make sure to dip it in more fucking angst for giving it to you. It has a tragic backstory before you got it. Well, since you you like to be in the spotlight currently, what are your thoughts on I the do. MonsterVerse so far, Frank? Well, actually, um, personally, if I had to get a little uh, analytical here, um, I've really enjoyed the MonsterVerse. It's definitely gone a little bit off the rails for sure, but I really think that it's fun how they've embraced where they were and have kind of figured out what they want to be. Not entirely so. But I do like that they're really bringing the world together of, like, a global destroyal monsters as planet. Of, like, these are all monsters that we have now. Maybe we'll start using them more often. I just like the where it came from, where, you know, the world kind of opened up with 2014. Because I rewatched 2014 when I showed my girlfriend all the Monsterverse films and really showed, like, man, they had no plan when they made 2014 to keep this shit going. Mm-hmm. I really think that Kong Skull Island is what really started the MonsterVerse, truly. Yeah, I think um, that makes sense. Because I've, I've seen a lot of compilations of, like, all the movies. Godzilla 2014 is rarely included with those, I've noticed. True, yeah. Because, like, back when 2014 was made, I don't think it was made with the intention of starting a cinematic universe. And it wasn't yeah, until Skull they, Island uh... where they're like, okay, now we're doing something here. They, they intended to do a Godzilla trilogy with Garrett Edwards directing right, all yeah. films. I'm glad they fucking did all... it. <laughs> it would have been in the greatest trilogy ever made. Right next to it would have been. It would have been so boring. Because <laughs> that's what would have made a like, genius, Frank. Because I'm uh, Gareth uh, Edwards. Slow, slow, slow I'm the one who here. sniffs my own thoughts. Because it's the greatest. A little movie bit, ever yeah. Made. He, like he made a, he made a movie called Monsters that was kind of okay. Which is the greatest movie ever a... made after Godzilla 2014. Sorry, I'm just doing an old bit from no, the SOS podcast where oh, we would might... legit make Air oh, Edwards good. out to be the most, like, pretentious fucker around. And then he made an okay Star Wars movie. It's like, okay, dude, you're Don't not Don't you mean the greatest good. Star Wars movie ever made? <laughs> right, next saw, my, was... right next to my cameo in The Last Jedi. My opinions on that movie is that my body saved me from watching that movie because the, the, the night I was supposed to see it, my appendix wanted out. Oof. That's not even a joke, so my so body's like, no, we're sparing you. <laughs> Your body wasn't ready, unlike Reggie fils Damn. Yeah. <laughs> my body death starred out of my body. <laughs> so, um, But yeah, no, yeah. so l- long short of it, I've it, it's been very interesting seeing the MonsterVerse. It's, for me, really, honest to God, it's the impact the MonsterVerse has had on us where I'm able to go to a store and grab Godzilla things. I'm able to go to a toy store and hear little kids saying, oh, I just grabbed a Godzilla or a Rodan or a you know King Kong toy. That makes me happy. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, no doubt about it that, you know, regardless of, you know, anyone's thoughts on the MonsterVerse, it certainly And helped. people are liking it, you know. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, people who are, like, known figures in podcasting or in media are like, Hey man, I just saw the new Godzilla movie. It was awesome. Not being like, "Hey, these piece of shit movies keep coming out." You know, you used to talk about Godzilla '98 like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, or this all oh, this goofy Godzilla movie. Because now you can be like, 
we'll get into this probably later, but you know, we're now hearing people being like, oh, the Oscar winning Godzilla minus one, or this really fun Godzilla movie, you know, in America just came out. It's really cool to hear that rather than people like, hey, did you watch a Godzilla movie? Fucking loser. <laughs> like I used to when I was little. Sure, sure. And, you know, like, you know, I, I may be, you know, e exaggerating my thoughts on the MonsterVerse, but it's like, I will I definitely want to say, you know, it's like, I am happy that people are enjoying these yeah. movies. I am happy that these movies have helped brought Godzilla closer into the mainstream. Realistically, it's, I div it's divided us as a community, though. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically, <laughs> I don't think Godzilla, Godzilla is ever going to be as mainstream as, say, the MCU was back in its prime. But yeah. I will say that it has certainly made Godzilla more prevalent in pop culture uh, than it was prior to 2014. And... Oh, for sure. I mean, it took a little while, even at, from 2014. I think when right. King of the Monsters came out really is when it started, like, picking up steam, mm -hmm. which was, again, the last five years or so, you know? But mm -hmm. 2014 definitely got the, you know, the spark back, for sure, of Godzilla being referenced in stuff again. Right, right. So we'll definitely give it that for sure. And Very also, true. you know, I guess Shin helped a little bit. That is true. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, Shin wouldn't have happened had it not been for 2014, arguably. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> Where the moment Toho started seeing, like, Legendary and Warner Brothers starting to make money off of 2014. They're like, oh, money. It's like, hey, mm, that's our like brand. That still? We should be doing that stuff with, oh, we should be the ones making that kind of money with, with our property. It's ours, oh, finally. I remember, no. I, remember, I remember there was a box office analyst from Forbes that said that uh, 2014 was going to be the John Carter of the year, the 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 biggest flop and mm. it turned out to be the opposite that's true yeah. that is kind of the interesting thing i've noticed though with these movies in that i don't know i do want to ask you i don't feel like any of these movies really do have like a lasting cultural impact in terms of will these movies still be talked about by your average joe like years down the line after they've you know come and gone from theaters because i don't really see anyone like 2014 was a success but did people outside of Godzilla fans, which you know were very, were a very small and niche bunch, did anyone outside of our fandom really talk about 2014 in the five years between it and King of the Monsters? Nor um, did anyone I... talk about King of the Monsters or GBK since their premieres, and as well as uh, Skull Island. I'd say in like brief murmurs in some groups, at least groups I've been in, they've mentioned they've liked it and seen it. Mm -hmm. You know, but that, a lot of that comes from just knowing me. They mm -hmm. bring up like just to like relate to me, like oh yeah, I saw that movie. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well again, for there's a lot of flash in a pan and came out or like big movies that have come out in general. It's like once a movie comes out, it's out. You know, there's no reason dwelling on it. But I feel like depending on how much more the monsterverse goes from here, you people are still now looking at it as the monsterverse. You know, like no one's talking about Iron Man one or like Captain America one. You know, they're being mm. like, oh, the MCU or the Iron Man series or, you know, or phase one. But you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like yeah. that. Like, they're, now that there's more than one Godzilla movie, they're going to look at it as a series as a whole now. Mm. Like, that we would have looked back at the Heisei series or the Showa series or the mm -hmm. Millennium series. We're not saying, like, oh, Mega Gears, mm, Chef's Kit. You know, no one's doing that shit, especially for that one. But, uh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no one's been uh -huh. talking about, like, oh, yeah, that movie really changed things up. Like, you know, but people are going to be like, oh, I love the Millennium series. Here's the ones I like from it. Or, mm -hmm. you know, but they're not going to talk about individual ones. So I'd say yeah. at the time, to, to round back, at the time, some people will definitely be like, oh, man, I wonder if they're going to make any more Godzilla movies talking back when 2014 came out. You know, yeah. but for the most part, that movie was really flash in a pan. Oh, cool. They did it and it didn't suck ass. Uh -huh. You know, let's hope if they make more, they're cooler. Or some people were like, oh, I hope they make more. I really like that. Was a lot of consensus for people who weren't fans necessarily, yeah, but yeah. did enjoy seeing that film. And I think for me personally, I feel like I, I guess this would transition into like I guess my overall thoughts on the on these movies, and that is basically I noticed that like Gareth Edwards certainly tried to do his own thing with 2014, and I feel like from King of the Monsters, the Dark Return to His Roots, yeah, yeah, or at least like that trying to film it lot. as like a disaster, natural disaster movie. Yeah, that movie plays more like a documentary the more I watch it. Yeah, yeah, 
And um, my thoughts on the film, it's like I, I really loved it when it originally came out, but my thoughts have sort of sullied over time just because I feel like the movie really mishandles its best characters, its main protagonist. Oh, you're telling me. His, the main protagonist works better when he has someone to bounce off of, but when he's by himself for the majority of the movie, he has there's just nothing to really attack for the audience to attach Which to. Which is a shame because the, he, that guy's a really good actor. But yeah. again, if you, if you watch the movie Monsters, they barely speak any words and they kind of suck. Uh-huh. And, that movie's uh, interesting, but it's not good. Right, right. It is kind of a mixed bag. 2014, uh, like Skull Island, I still think Skull Island is still to this day the best MonsterVerse movie. Uh, I'd agree. I think they found their footing with Skull Island and tried mm-hmm. to recapture that. Mm-hmm. Definitely with the humor. They've never been able to recapture how funny Skull Island was. Yeah. And then like from, from King of the Monsters, GVK and GXK, I've noticed that they've certainly pivoted directions in a way where I feel like People often con- um, consider this later movie, these the direction of these movies, to be akin to the Showa-era Godzilla films. By that, meaning that they're taking themselves less seriously, going a more goofy, over-the-top, fantastical direction. And for me, though, I see it in a very different way. I see it as them trying to be, trying to follow that template of the modern Hollywood blockbuster tentpole genre film. Basically, mm-hmm. when I look at these movies, uh, these later MonsterVerse movies, I don't think of the Showa series. I think of stuff like Jurassic World, the Michael Bay Transformer films, the Meg, the Meg, and the Meg Two, uh, Rampage with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I th- even think of like uh, even the Fast and Furious movies with how dumb those plots can get. But who cares? Because at the end of the day, these are movies where you're meant to sit down, turn your brain off, watch the spectacle, watch the monsters punch each other you know stuff your face full of popcorn and enjoy yourself for the time being and don't think too deeply about any of what's happening on screen yeah and i, I think don't they're, they're think... definitely do for one you know a serious one i feel like, mm-hmm. uh, like... I, again i i would uh-huh. hope for a serious monster versus movie no don't get me wrong yeah and i think there was I... an attempt like 2014 definitely tried to do that and then 24 20 uh king of the monsters was sort of half and half where it tried yeah it had, to be... had glimpses of a serious monster mo- movie yeah, i think it, it, there was there's there more peril in that one than anything else with Ghidorah. like it tried to be a movie about something it tried to be about like the environment and all that stuff personally i think it was handled in a very laughable way where oh yeah was... no they had then then um too many characters is yeah really or like oh hey it's radiation weird. can just magically make the environment healthy again <laughs> nuclear radiation i must add anyone can anyone who who says oh but it's magic monsterverse radiation no no it's not yeah they never they never say you know <laughs> that, it, that their radiation is special or anything they yeah. just say Godzilla the, takes a nuke to the face that is clearly meant to be nuclear radiation he's giving off <laughs> yeah but anyways 2019 2019 tried to be about something while also trying it was trying to have its cake and eat it too and then by gvk gxk it's like we're they're not even trying to to be about something and i can't fault it for trying to be i can't fault it for being something that it's for not being something that it's not it's like it knows what it is they advertise it. It's like it's right on the box. They advertise it that it's a big, dumb action movie, and that's exactly what you're going to get. And, you know, for the most part, they deliver on what they advertise with both of these yeah. uh, crossover movies. I cannot I th- fault, I ever fault the, them for that. Yeah, I think the expectation is that there'll be some more serious characters in it. Like the, Because, again, I do miss the more serious characters for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, again, I really think that the, the harm is that where when they try to have a villain, quote-unquote, Mm-hmm. They're too goofy and cartoonish when they don't need to be. And when they try to be serious, they try to throw a joke in when it's not necessary. I think that's also them, again, going back to my point of them trying to replicate the formula of the modern Hollywood blockbuster. Yeah, no, and I, get, and I agree with you. I fully agree with you with that. Yeah, they, you know, they want to be like Joss Whedon. Everyone wants to be like Joss Whedon. Everyone wants to have quippy characters who make pop culture references and make snap yeah, like no at each no other. No one, like, I, I think what the, the worst way I can describe it is they're trying to be memeable. They're trying yeah. to have a screenshot. And honest to God, the things, no one's getting memed? The fucking monsters, as they should be. <laughs> um, like, I love that all the memes from those movies are of the yeah. monsters. Everyone of the people are like, who, who is this? 
Right, right. And I guess that's for me. I've never been a fan of the type of humor in these type of in these movies, especially when it comes they're, to the human pl- characters. They're definitely, pl- they're definitely playing it safe, but yeah. they also don't know what they want to be in terms of funny. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, it's not gonna be gut busting left, but also like great example. John C. Riley's character was like a you know a crazy yeah, he guy was on funny. Staten Island. Yeah, but again, one he's one he's an actual comedic actor, so yeah. he knows how to deliver. Mm-hmm. But his type of humor wasn't him just being like. Like his, you know, he wasn't just making dumb, weird jokes that made no sense. He was making observatory jokes, or like just like his personality was inherently funny. Right, right. And he I wasn't guess... trying to be quirky or mm-hmm. say thing, something funny or make a reference that was funny. He just was funny. He was a funny character. Right, right. And um, so when it comes to this movie in particular, at least like the one one of the few characters that's in both GXK and GVK is um, the character Bernie Hayes, who is this podcaster slash conspiracy theorist. Oh, man, I did not. I do not enjoy. I love that actor. Do you not enjoy that character at all? I think he brings all. He brings the he brings the right amount of energy in this movie, but just nothing. He's uh, a lot of what he says was for me eye rolling, and so much. He doesn't contribute anything to the. No, he film, doesn't. Really. Yeah, and the, the whole thing is like um, Rebecca Hall's character, uh, Doctor Andrew. She comes in to his uh, little like apartment, saying, "Hey, can you take yeah. a look at these things? Can you tell what it is?" And like, sure. And then he muscles his way into being a part of the Hollow Earth expedition, and then provides... and helps with yeah, he helps Fuck with all. one thing, and then they just bring him along. Yeah, yeah, he just forces them to bring him along. And then he provides, like, nothing for the entire movie except for to occasionally, like, exposit information that could have easily have been handed off to anyone else, yeah. any other character. And they, and then when he, they try to, like, they mush up his backstory, like, ah, oh, my wife died. It's like, okay, dude. The, yeah, and what's, here's what's weird, though. He, uh-huh. His character was, was, un, was set up since 2014, if you and this is, is like it didn't have background reading. If you watch the bonus features in 2014, uh-huh. it's a, somebody doing a podcast documentary about the things that happened. Oh, really? And, they back. and I'm pretty oh, sure he's that he's that character. You mean one of the special features? Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly which one you're talking about. I think it's yeah. Uh... I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, it's probably it's not his character, but I'm pretty sure that's the character you could you could basically roundabout way say that's him. Yeah, that, that that could does make sense, but that doesn't make it better. I'm not no, saying it makes no. it better, but like, because <laughs> because it's like, I think for me, it's the whole thing that conspiracy theorists uh-huh. aren't funny or interesting. Uh huh. Especially, Especially when you have to hang out with them. Right, right, and also I I don't think a conspiracy theorist works for a, for a story like this because. Uh, what was it? There was like it's a, all real. Everything's it's real. Real, yeah. And like in even in the last movie, you had the generic protagonist man who's like had a, a, a published a book about Hollow Earth, and no one believed him except for when the Dosekis man, the villain of the movie, came in. And don't you tell me it's otherwise. <laughs> the Dosekis man. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> the Dosekis man came in and be like, "Listen, I got a, a shuttle that will take you into the Hollow Earth, so you can prove Jeez, that your studies geez. are real." Ja, 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 ja. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. How does no one believe not why why would anyone in this universe not believe that monsters in Hollow Earth are are not a real thing at this point? Like what is there to conspire about? Like like for I don't me, think the monsters monsters within Hollow Earth, it was the Hollow Earth itself that was being Right, but like we do establish that these monsters have been living underground for all this time. So it's like how how is it any less implausible that there could be some like yeah. journey to the center of the earth bullshit happening underground? Well, that, well, that's why I'm glad the MonsterVerse TV series, which which was again hit or miss, mm-hmm. you know, you be your be your own judge, has filled in some of the blanks. I think watching the MonsterVerse television show did help some of the enjoyability of some of the movie help a little bit because it made uh-huh. things seem a little more rounded. It it really filled in the gaps that a lot of those movies left out. Potentially, I will say. Potentially, I gave up on the MonsterVerse two after uh, I, I gave up after on Monarch after two episodes just because I didn't like any of the characters. But... Oh yeah, no one in no one in the modern times is fun to hang. No, <laughs> that, everyone's across the board can say that they're not fun to be around. They started off so good and strong, and then after a while, it's like, am I just finding out they're a fucking teenage drama? This sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, the rest of it's really good. But the payoff, the payoff at the end is pretty nice. But, uh, but like, it is a slog. <laughs> I guess regardless of its quality, I, I do have to bring up the fact that it's like the one thing you should not do 
when writing a movie or writing any sort of story is having the audience do their homework, force them to do their oh, homework. Oh, no, for sure. In order to comprehend what's happening in this, pro- in this, you know, in, in your movie, which is meant to be like a standalone experience. Yeah, for, for these movies, a lot of the times the more interesting things are happening on in the background and we're not privy to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, David, you've been quiet for a bit. What are your thoughts yeah, on bitch. the character I mean, of Bernie? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Bernie was one of those characters that I honestly didn't like about GVK, and I mm-hmm. wasn't too hot about him coming back. But mm-hmm. I will say this, that he's kind of kind of slightly m- more tolerable here. I don't want to say that he's an improvement, but he's mm-hmm. more – I found him more tolerable here. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, um, mm-hmm. go ahead. Honestly, that character 100% exists because of Adam Wingard. He he's gone on record saying that he's a he, he's a huge fan of conspiracy theories. And even when I when I met him, yes, I'm gonna bring that up every single time I met Adam <laughs> Wingard. Did you kiss him on the mouth, you freak? I could have, I could have, but his girlfriend was there and she was watching. Damn. <laughs> Anyways, you didn't want to make her jealous. Yeah. Now, when I took a picture with him, I took two pictures. One of them, he did the Illuminati eye symbol thing. So, yeah, he's into what all the that. Fuck? I don't like this guy <laughs> Illuminati confirmed in the MonsterVerse? Someone tell Dangerville this so he, they can make 28 videos about this <laughs> oh revelation. My, oh, my God. Calling them out. <laughs> I don't care. Nobody watches this channel. And if they do, yeah. I still don't care. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Ash later on, Andres. <laughs> Your Honor. <laughs> this right man is first. a poopy head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're going to call INS on you. <laughs> Um, so I guess I go, jo- going from one character that I did not like to one that I did like, I was pleasantly surprised to see how well they've developed Gia as a character because she was the yes. one character that I genuinely enjoyed in GBK. And I like her. I, I like her mom. Yeah, uh, Rebecca Hall. She's okay for me. She kind of is a very serviceable protagonist. I, I was I, not I, a fan of the hair. I was not a fan <laughs> of the new hair in this film. Nah, yeah, I kind of liked her old look before. Oh yeah, the the Karen hairstyle. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, I, I didn't did, like I didn't like Home, yeah. Surfer Hawaiian man that, that teamed up with them because it's like that's literally the same. You literally copy and pasted the same white dude. <laughs> I I did like him. Uh, I thought he was a very. It was very interesting to have a kaiju or a titan veterinary veterinarian for this universe. Uh, it's something. It's a that concept. was cool. Yeah, it's a concept we've never seen before in any sort of kaiju fiction. I just think that there wasn't a whole lot done with him in particular, especially by the time the movie... I wish I knew about him a movie prior, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Or it's like, you know, he's funny, he's very chillax, he's, you know, the whole hippie, one with nature sort of deal. I found him to be more funny than Bernie, who's meant to be, like, the the actual comic relief. I know, he was definitely better, and again, I'm glad they put them together so when Bernie wasn't being funny, that guy could come in with a zinger to cover it. True, true. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just feel like he was sort of like put by the time they reached that, and this is gonna be full spoilers, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, by the time they reach the the point where like the the action starts to ramp up, and they reach that the 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 hidden temple in the Hollow Earth beneath Hollow Earth, or as I like to call it, Hollow <laughs> Earth, Hollow Earth Earth. That, yeah. I feel like he sort of fell Earth. into the yeah <laughs> Earth with an F. <laughs> hollow Hollow Earth. Hello, Earth. <laughs> I like that. Um, he kind of just sort of falls into the background and just has nothing to do after that. At, after that point, um, at that point, the only character who's really re- relevant is Gia, and um, it, I would have liked to have seen some sort of like there seemed to have been like a previous relationship between him and Rebecca Hall's character, but that n- that. But never... so, did, so did the guy. So did the guy in the last movie. Right, that's it's so weird, but like none of the like per, generic protagonist man number one gets replaced by generic protagonist man number two, and neither of them like ha- their characters don't go anywhere by the end of the movie. Yeah, uh, but uh, anyways, like uh, the other, I was I was about to bring up. Uh, I keep forgetting Re- Doctor Andrews, uh, her character, the character's name. So Doctor Andrews. Like, I liked what they were trying to do with her and Gia, her being, like, her surrogate slash adopted mother and helping her become more accustomed to life yeah, on the like surface. Yeah, life in, 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 you know, Western civilization. And, like, just her, like, Gia learning to explore more about her Iwi roots. I do kind of find it funny that, like, they 
I, well, I'll, I'll explain why. Like, they were trying to do this whole thing where it's like, oh, she might be, is she going to end up with uh, Dr. Andrews? Is she going to end up with the Iwi people? What's going to happen? That's like sort of like the the core element of the uh, of the story, this sort of like found family versus biological family sort of deal. And it goes yeah. in a very predictable direction. It's serviceable enough. It's fine for what it is. But if you've watched any number of movies like these, you know exactly Lifetime where this is going to... What's that? Lifetime movies. Lifetime movies. Yeah, yeah, you know where this movie, where this is going to end up. Here's why I found it funny. It was because back in the day, when I was watching Pokemon, there was an, an episode with this exact same plot where <laughs> Ash... And I'm, any Pokemon fans out there knows this episode... Ash oh, takes no. Ash takes Pikachu and they discover this like entire oh, the Pikachu tribe the, the, the Pikachu, Pikachu tribe, tribe yeah and there's this whole dramatic Pika, moment of is P- is P- <laughs> is Pikachu gonna stay with the other Pikachus or does he want to continue with Ash and of course it's the exact same ending so as I was watching GXK my mind was like this is the fucking Pikachu episode. <laughs> Oh my god! I didn't and I think could, about that. And I could no longer take whatever level, whatever attempt at emotional drama this movie was trying to convey. I no longer had any like investment in it, just because I was just thinking about the fucking Pikachu's this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so again, whatever dramatic uh, uh, storytelling was, was they were attempting just went right out the window for me <laughs> for the Damn. stupidest reasons. <laughs> Confirm, Andres is a fucking dick. <laughs> like, I, what, I, motherfucker, I just established that I was going to be the bad guy for this show. He's, <laughs> he's the Mexican Scar King. <laughs> oh my god, he is. He's pointing at us and laughing. <laughs> ah, look at these dumb fucks getting all emotional. <laughs> Fuck you, I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's see. Anything else about the about the human characters? What uh, what little um, exists do you guys want to talk uh, about? The unnecessary mean Australian man. Oh yeah, that was another thing where it's like, it's again, like oh, I'm the ringleader. I'm an asshole, which means I'm the one who's gonna easily get killed off. Oh crikey! <laughs> I, I, Watch shit, out for I'm that dead. mutant stingray! Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, come that's, on. That's another Easy. fucking dumb callback to SOS. I'm pulling my punches this time because I'm being a polite little cherub right here, and you're fucking pulling out goddamn references. What did I fucking said? I was the fucking fucking to be the bad guy. I guess so, man. But easy, easy, go easy on me, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. No. Uh, uh. The Australian man was very much. Who? Who's this? Yeah. Yeah. And I like, he's Irish. <laughs> was he? Yeah, uh, oh. Alex Burns. He's either sc- Scottish or Irish because I've seen him in a lot of crap, and well, he always he retains really... his. Uh... Well, he was oh, doing he's Scottish. A... He's Scottish. Oh yeah, I just looked him up. He's Scottish. Well, he didn't sound sc- too Scottish just then. <laughs> uh, uh, from his <laughs> he he... Australian, <laughs> I thought so. I might. <laughs> For, for... Yeah, he's like, good eye, mate. <laughs> always gonna avoid those spiders. <laughs> Won't see them. Can't get you. I don't know. It's fucking Jace. Um, but yeah, no, that guy. Uh huh. Giant yeah, part. Pretty, yeah, it was pretty obvious what they were trying to do. Yeah, like yeah, it, Jay- again, it's that it's that you know your that typical formula of you're gonna introduce the asshole character so that he can be expendable and you're not gonna miss him. I'm just glad there was no person human villain. Uh huh. Um, I think the idea of a kaiju villain was certainly interesting. And I guess that's the next thing I want to talk about, which was how good of a villain do you think Scar King and Shimo were in in this film? Uh, David. David. Let, let me go back to the characters right quick. Okay, I can yeah, say... sure, sure. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. She... Uh, the first time I saw this movie, I had very, very mixed feelings. By the second time I saw it, I liked it. But upon that first viewing, I had so many issues, the characters being one of them. And... One thing that I pointed out that, that was pointed out to me in Steve Rifle's uh, review is that all these characters are plot devices, including the monsters. Uh huh. Yeah. If That's I were to fair. compare this film with any uh, where where we are in the Showa era, we'd probably be at Godzilla versus Megalon because similar to that film, to this film. Uh, those characters were all plot devices, and that's yeah, but no, ba- but no baby rider, so no baby rider. Oh, <laughs> oh the wait, little kid they... with the with the bike. 
Yeah. A baby rider. <laughs> Unless the heave, the that that vehicle they take into the hollow earth. That could be baby rider. A baby rider. <laughs> no, no, that's a dolphin ride. That weird dolphin ride. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, Trapper is really only there to um extract the tooth and to set up like some sort of connection with the Dr. Andrews and um mm-hmm. Dr. Andrews is uh the Gia's keeper, I guess. <laughs> Her, her, uh, I guess adopted I, mom. I, I, I'd say yeah. mom. I'd yeah. say mom. Or mom. Which you know exactly what I meant. Yeah. yeah. No. No, <laughs> make you feel bad. Her keeper. Bernie, what are you trying Bernie. to say? She's some kind of animal, David? Yeah, get him. <laughs> you know exactly what I meant. Anyways, go on. Bernie's purpose is already served in like what the first twenty minutes when he finds out what this what the uh the stress yeah, this, yeah is. He, he had yeah he, again he, he should have been like again, I would have loved if he was just a reference to the last movie it was like hey remember him he helped bye <laughs> again realist talk of real talk I uh-huh. would have loved if they gave Millie Bobby Brown a third shot at being in this movie and let her fucking act because <laughs> uh, real I, talk like, like cause she's she really she had fun. nothing to do in in the last movie. Yeah, both. That's what I'm saying. If they gave her one more shot, again, yeah. even the dad character I liked in 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 King of the Monsters. Yeah, yeah. So again, I like I like that we at least got to see him. True, true. But yeah. That, now oh, that we're talking ahead. about, since I brought up the characters, it's a good segue into the uh, the monster villain, though. Yeah. I I like Scar King and I even like Shimo. I like the concept behind Shimo. I I, mm-hmm. yeah. I was so stupid enough to buy those uh those toys from Playmates. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was Playmates. Yeah, yeah. But uh, one of my big issues is that there wasn't enough time to to explore that an- antagonism between Kong and Scar King. Uh-huh. And, yeah, and, and also that relationship of Shimo to the Scar King. Like it, we established it pretty well, but like. I would have loved to know what if Scar if Shimo had more like ambition of herself that she wasn't just kind of like a weird pet. Th- yeah, that is true because I thought that was interesting that like they definitely have a sort of a like has a very abusive relationship with him having forcing Shimo to do his bidding, and um, uh, for me it's like this is another ish a pet a huge issue I've had with the MonsterVerse where. Every single one of these stories always involves an ancient rival from the past. You know, from 2014, it was the Mutos. For uh, uh, King of the Monsters, it was Ghidorah. For G- Mechagodzilla, Mechagodzilla was new. He just... Me- but who was behind uh, the brain? Fucking Ghidorah again. But Ghidorah. Also, was that, again, again, was that a reference to the manga? I don't know. Could have been. Uh, with given these Hollywood writers, I don't, I, I kind of doubt it personally. But but with, it was so eerily similar. <laughs> yes, it was. For GVK, also you got to keep in mind they also set up co- the Kong species and Godzilla species as ancient rivals, akin to the Mutos from 2014. But I'm, uh, I'm glad they retconned it that it was Scar King's tribe against them, not Kong's. I get. Did they really? Because they just mentioned yeah, they that Scar, they just mentioned Scar King was just another an enemy of, of Godzilla's back in the day. No, which, well, I, I, again, I think they retconned yeah. it that that Scar King made an uprising of the of select Kong species. I guess to it was, like go go after him. If Scar King is the reason why Godzilla hates all giant monkeys. I don't think the movie did a good job, like explaining that or clarifying that. Cause... I I picked up on it because I'm a because I'm um I'm, I don't have a smooth brain. I'm a smart boy, <laughs> unlike some people I know. So I picked it up because no, I'm <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, you learn about no, it from I mean... one of the th- theory videos on the MonsterVerse on YouTube. Uh, yeah, on t- thanks to Dangerville. Shout out. <laughs> um. No, but that, for me, it, it made more sense that, like, I, I kind of pieced it together, like, oh, that explains why, like, yeah. all the Godzilla skulls, they probably made the axe weapons. Uh-huh. But I guess, like, going back, like, just looking at GBK on its own as a single, as a standalone film, it does establish that Kong species is an ancient rival. I was going to bring up that uh, the skull crawlers from Skull Island are another ancient rival species. And now this case, we have... Uh, Scar King, who himself is an ancient rival to Godzilla, which doesn't really make sense because Godzilla has barely any, not only does Godzilla have barely anything to do in this movie, but this was clearly meant to be a King Kong story 
guest starring Godzilla. And yeah, my issue with that is that we just had that type of story with uh, GBK. GBK also felt like a Kong story guest starring yeah, Godzilla. And, and, which makes technically three Kong type films. I think for me yeah. it's because Kong can be, even though Godzilla can be plenty expressive, I think it's because it's that male, that male, that ma- not male, uh, mammal. Yeah, oh, sure, sure. That was relatable. I think also for Godzilla, he, like this is gonna sound weird. Godzilla ain't got no friends, so he <laughs> so him just by himself really yeah. wouldn't do anything. Kong like sits down, looks at his hands, looks at rocks, like scratches his ass. Singing. You know what I'm saying? Godzilla just goes like ah, like he just screams <laughs> and shit. You know. True, yeah. I just wish that, you know, the writers had... Give us Angerus, give us give us Rodan. Yeah, bring back Rodan or whatever, some shit. Well, again, if Godzilla and Mothra were hanging out, there'd be way more to it. That's true, that's true, yeah. Speaking of which, well, I'll get to Mothra in a sec, but, um, yeah, with but, Godzilla, oh, but, I feel like this yeah. movie would have worked better if it was just a Kong movie and not just force Godzilla into it and just giving Go- Godzilla this shared backstory with Shimo and... and and uh, Scar King that doesn't get explored at all. Um, yeah, if anything, um, I would have just preferred if Kong just happened to have stumbled upon, uh, upon this ancient tribe of Kongs that have never been seen before and just leave it at that. Also, I do find it weird that like Kong, like Scar King is apparently like super, super old, like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years old. Him, Shimo, and the rest of these Kongs. And yet our Kong, he's at least what like 70 years at the youngest and he already looks o- significantly older than the majority um, of these it, kongs it, here it's it's uh again this is one of those things where maybe this was intentional or not mm-hmm. but being in the hollow earth time, time goes seven, slower yeah yeah so that's why he was able to be uh, like above to- above there he was yeah he yeah got old I guess so, but again, this goes back to that whole making the audience having to do homework in order to understand the plot of, of this yeah. standalone movie. So it's like, that. I still find that to be a valid criticism there in terms of world building, because that's yeah, what this sure. movie is. This movie is trying to build on the lore of the MonsterVerse, except when you're trying to look at it as a standalone piece, it's just like, wait, hold on, how exactly does this work? Yeah. Um, how ex- how I, have the Kongs been surviving in the hollow er- I, earth all this time with no food? Like, so, if, so my opinions on the monster villains, I definitely yeah. feel like some of it was a little lost potential because I really was expecting Shimo to have a little more free free range. Yeah, yeah. And then it'd be revealed that she was being, she was being controlled by Scar King, not so much right when we see her for the first time. Sure, sure. Because, again, Godzilla, I really think, I thought, what I thought was going to happen, I thought it was going to be the classic Gamera stage fight where it's Godzilla gets his ass beat in, yeah. got, then goes to get a power up, fights back when, you know, when the chips are down. Uh huh. And uh, also, I, I theorize also that Godzilla was not powering up for them, he was powering up for whatever's coming after them. Right. I was, that's the thing. Like, when Godzilla was powering up, there Godzilla was a lot of. Because Godzilla one obviously could murder the shit out of Scar King by himself. Yeah, normally. like he fucking blasted a hole to the center of the Earth with just the, his regular nuclear breath. He didn't and he, need, and he also and he also he beat Kong easy. Yeah, he does not, and Kong beat Scar King easily. So there's no need for fucking Kaioken like, bullshit going on here. Yeah, Shimo obviously would have, like, again, I don't even know if Shimo's, like, without Godzilla's power being amplified, would have taken Godzilla. It definitely, definitely would have been a struggle for Godzilla, but yeah. with Godzilla's, like, power, yeah. I don't think it's... So again, my, my theory is that Godzilla is getting ready for a battle yet to come. Yeah, that, that was the thing. Like, they were hyping this up as, oh, there's going to be this big invasion. There's going to be this big, giant disaster calamity going to happen. And Kong, like Godzilla spends the entire movie powering up for this big battle. And the battle itself... But, Godzilla, but then again, Godzilla oh, yeah. operates, seems to be on another level to everyone else in this movie. That's what I like about him. He uh-huh. doesn't even just say shit. We don't need to know about it. He's just like, I know what's coming. Y'all better just trust me. And I was buying that, but then, like, when we actually see the battle itself, it's like, did we really need all that buildup for this? Just Shimo, Scar King, and, like, five random monkeys? Five of the five monkeys of which get taken care of easily by Mothra, so it's ultimately just a two-on-two fight? I don't know, it just felt like like the, the climax itself did not live yeah. up to all of that buildup. Like, I was expecting, like, an entire army of monkeys on the surface, wreaking havoc 
all over the globe. I was expecting, you know, the new yeah. empire. When I hear the title, the new empire, I'm expecting. Yeah, same. More. I was expecting. Yeah, and again, I was expecting the like the more of an ice age thing to happen too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They barely do anything creative wise with with Shimo's ice abilities, other than like when Shimo first appears and just like frost bites the shit out of of Kong's hand. I thought that was pretty cool, yeah. but then like. I don't think Shimo ever got to do anything that cool again for the rest of the movie, um, no. especially when Shimo, as uh, my my roommates pointed out to me, Shimo significantly shrinks in size after her int his or her its introduction. I think yeah, people no. call it a her. I I really don't know. It's it's a, it's it's a it's a her. Okay, I think. Shimo pretty shrinks drastically in size. Um, to like half of her size after her introductory sequence. So yeah, because she's, she, not... she's like big, bigger than Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, she's like fucking she's supposed huge. To be. I mean, she still kind of is. Like her Godzilla's holding her entire head in in his hands. Yeah, but she's when he's fighting her. But it doesn't her 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 level of threateningness. Her level of her like in her, her level of intimidation. Also not threatening. No, yeah, that's that, that's another thing. It's like. From a design standpoint, I just kind of find it generic. I'm not the biggest fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the biggest fan. Well, I just don't... Also, not... all white. Ugh. <laughs> it's like, I, I just... Not, not, even, not, not like that. I mean, like, literally just like... <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's, 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 it's... During a... the daytime. It's the same issue I had with the, uh, the Irex from Jurassic World. It's a very boring design for a... Uh, a brand new original monster. Well, like I hate to say it, like if it was more like Crystalac from the Unleash series, yeah, you know, where it had like cool. where where it had more like crystals and shit protruding from them, I wait, I dig that. I think again, I, I was really hoping uh -huh. it would go, or again, I would hoping it was go rogue, and then Godzilla and Kong would have to stop it together, not yeah. kill it, stop it. Right. I, I just think I just think that what they were trying to go for is we want Godzilla and Kong to fight what are essentially evil Godzilla and evil Kong, and they were trying to make these, trying to draw these like parallels, these evil doppelganger versions of each other. But I just kind of find it to be creative, a, a bit lazy from a creative standpoint. And yeah. in terms of like the Scar King himself, I like the sort of personality they gave him at the at the beginning, where you know he's well, he was like he was like King Louis. Yeah, you know he's King Louis. He's you know got a lot. There's a lot of like machismo. His very top dog status. You know he tries to get his whole every. He's he has his like inti he's intimidating. He's also very charismatic. Um, but he gets his ass kicked by Kong, and so it's like, why should I even feel threatened by this guy who Godzilla supposedly could not beat hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of years ago? Well, he didn't say he didn't beat him. Godzilla just said, like, no, you guys go back down there. Fuck you. Right, right. Godzilla could not... They established that Godzilla could not finish them off, and that's why he was forced to, to seal them away. He could yeah. not... He was not capable of killing them. And from what I see in this movie, I don't see why they were such a big deal for Godzilla to begin with. Maybe it was just the amount of them, because, like, when Kong got hit by Godzilla's breath in general, he didn't get sliced in half. He got singed. Yeah, but then that also goes back to the inconsistent writing of depiction oh, yeah, of Godzilla's sure. power levels. You know, sometimes he's strong enough to blast a hole to to Hollow Earth. Other well, times, that's because he, he's that's because not. He charges, he charges breath for like days. Right, right, and then again, that's another cons inconsistency. It's like you know, how long does it take for him to be super duper powerful, strong, and when is he just able to just fucking do that? Like when he blasted Scylla, the the spider crab monster, Scylla's brains apart using the exact yeah. same method he used to kill the Mutos. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, David, you've been quiet for a while. What are your thoughts on Shimo and Scar King? Uh, Funny yeah, thing yeah. you ask, because I just came back. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. talk, I damn it. Say, I think yeah, you... Anyways, what was the question? What are your thoughts on Shimo and Scar King, and how do they work as villains for you in this film? Because I, I, I said they don't really, they're not really villain villains, they're just kind of obstacles. And I mentioned they're that not they, big, they came They're not big as, threats. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the movie tries to build them up as big threats, but then when you see them, they're like, were they that big of a threat to, to begin with, though? I, I I actually do love these characters as, as, uh, one-off villains but mm -hmm. um you're right they're not that big threats but i think the reason why godzilla was powering up and this is just my theory and mm -hmm. it's also just spitballing oh, wait, wait, wait. A G we have a theory a G <laughs> is that is that a new uh 
subsection of SOS. <laughs> it's, it's like every every episode now. It's going to be like now it's time for a G theory. Bip, bip, bip. Thanks for watching. Is it. is Conk in Godzilla versus Conk? <laughs> Shout out to Alexander the Swell for his amazing parody videos on the Godzilla community. Hell yeah. Anyways, what were you going to say? What do you think? What's your theory? Andre, send me those videos later. I Anyways, will. um, so <laughs> Bitch, my, what's your theory? <laughs> so my theory why Godzilla was powering up is because maybe at his um normal blue radioactive level, it's not enough for Shimo. Uh, it, Shimo could probably um g- give him frostbite, so he had to radiate himself with so much radioactive heat that um Shimo's uh, ice breath probably wouldn't be as effective that that's my theory that my Godzilla theory was he was set. getting re- my theory was he was getting ready for something bigger that's yeah, yet to something. come which is something that if they do a sequel Godzilla X Kong 3 they probably might destroy do that. Destroy yeah they'll just please. retcon it to like oh he wasn't powering up for them he was powering up for this that sounds which like I, and, and, I, and here's the thing as shitty as that is I'd be fine with that just don't make destroy another ancient rival <laughs> Just yeah, don't make him a rival. Just be like he's like the progenitor of everyone or something like that because he's from the Precambrian era. Yeah, <laughs> he, who's from the Hollow Earth? Yeah, whatever. I, I love Scar King's swagger, that tyrannical confidence that he has, especially when he stands yeah. up for the very first time. Yeah, and I yeah, love very that. Machiavellian of his, of his of his walk cycle. No, he, he's he like, like tilt yeah. leaning his head back. You know, he's like, you know, like, like he's sizing up Kong right there. Well, like I was saying to him earlier, I'm not sure if you heard it, but he's like King Louis from Jungle Book. Or, or Lanky I, Kong. I, shut Lanky. up. <laughs> shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> okay. There's just this character about him that I just enjoy as a villain. And Shimo, um, I've had theories about Shimo, and I thought that um, I, I, my theory was correct that she, Shimo is... A victim of Scar King, but no reason is ever given as to why. I thought a good reason was that I don't know, maybe she's protecting her eggs or her babies or something like that. That's what I was. That's what I was expecting for a reveal. Um, but no, it's it's just a giant dog that can. Yeah, yeah. Give you <laughs> it's just- also you know I was also thinking that there were like, like again I even theorized like oh I was wondering like oh maybe it was Shimo that put Ghidorah on ice back in the oh, day. The novelization confirmed that that was her. Oh shit! Cool. Okay, I didn't even read that. Yeah, I mean, Wait, it would have been nice if that was mentioned the, in the fucking story. The GXK novelization? Yes. What? Yes. What? Yes. It's out now? Yes. Wait, because I read the stupid novelization for King of the Monsters. And they never <laughs> see what the fuck? Well, well, here's the thing. I, I, I'm surprised you're, you're even asking this, David, because as I'm pretty sure it's obvious by now None of this MonsterVerse universe was ever planned from the very beginning. They're just making no. shit up as they're going along. Like, so, so, much, so much so that the even, novelization like, doesn't come out until April 16th. Where'd you get this information? I, I have ways, David. Slut, tell us. <laughs> I'll choke the ways out of you. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be the you fucking, it's going to be like the Last of Us 2 memes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but anyways, uh, but if, yeah, if that, that is that supposed is to be true. her. If that is true, if that is canon, I, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't be surprised. They keep retconning yeah, shit like, every the, movie. Like, I know this isn't a surprise, the fact that, like, the the comics themselves, the tie-in comics themselves keep getting um, uh, retconned out of, out of continuity over and over again. Because when it comes to comics, no, none of the filmmakers ever care to follow. Also, most people that. don't fucking read them. Cause yeah, they- yeah. <laughs> So it, it, it's just kind of funny that, like, they're just, again, making shit up. None of this was ever planned. They're just filling whatever gaps are within the movies themselves as opposed to whatever's as stated in the novelizations or even the uh, tie-in comics. The and funny thing is that um, yeah. Tiamat is it's, it's, it's in the movie, but I think... Um, oh, yeah, Tiamat that was in... Or... That was a, a comic book monster, and I think that yeah. um, our uh, one of the artists in our community, Dope Pope, actually had a hand in designing Tiamat. Yeah. Which really? is really cool. 
That's, that that's crazy. Oh. We got to meet that guy. He's cool. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, there was another artist, um, Sea Guns, who had that uh, like graffiti image of Godzilla eating oh, yeah, a slice yeah. of pizza. I was like, oh, that's awesome that another member yeah. of the artist community got to have their artwork featured in the movie. That's honestly I bet legit that awesome. I bet that made somebody pretty mad. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's Adam Wingard's uh, idea or legendaries, but they got to keep doing that. True. Yes. True. Yeah. I, I do dig that. The idea of getting people. Um, talented people um, from talented the community. Talented people. Yes, talented people from, from the, the community. Com- from the community. Not, not people with big Whoa. social media numbers. <laughs> Whoa, easy, easy, Chris. <laughs> Did uh, you just call him Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Anders, you do kind of look like Chris now that I think about it. <laughs> How dare you? Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, no, I'm thinking that, yeah, the villains were more, like, obstacles, less villains. Even with Scar King, it's like, here's the thing with Scar King. Let's be real amongst real talk. Yeah. (laughs) I love where this is going. Okay, no, for real. Like, so, Godzilla, military attacks him, shrugs it off, blows him up. Yeah. Kong, he gets hurt when the military attacks him, remember? Oh yeah, I forgot. The, you're talking about. Like- Imagine if the military had a one cannon aimed at Scar King. He'd be fucking donezo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing I think we forget. It- like Scar King actually has no super. He's just tough. Like Kong is tough. He, he just has. But a- he would get obliterated by like mortar shells and like from like a you know uh, like a sea cruiser from offshore to, just to, like pumps a cannon into him all, all he is is a bald skinny little monkey with a bone whip that for some reason kong and godzilla can't just snap in two with ease well well he fucking did and it works yeah <laughs> well here's the thing to bring up an old meme from the gvk days the thing about scar king is he monkey he monkey <laughs> he well, not, that's he, again, he, he not just point. he not just monkey he big monkey. <laughs> but my point proceeds me. Remember those drones that were shooting the shit out of Godzilla with those missiles? Yeah. If they did it to Scar King, he'd be fucking cooked. That's very true. That's very true. But consider the fact that he monkey, though. <laughs> I, in Scar King's defense, I think he he's way faster than Kong. Oh, no, for sure. Monkey. And he monkey. <laughs> Monkey, he, 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 he or he orangutan. He's monkeys. He's pretty monkey, so he's more limber. He's a, he, he's orangu, He's more like an orangutan. <laughs> he tangy monkey. He tango. I I think he's a chimp, though. No, are there any no. red chimps? No, no, no. He's he's more like an orangutan. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's an orangutan. Don't or don't ta- don't take my, don't take our King Louis references away from us, David. <laughs> Yeah, dude, fucking don't fuck off. It's all we have to live off of. It's all we have to go on. Yeah, man, I gotta, I gotta support three kids with this. <laughs> reference. Well, I'll get INS to take more than that, Andres. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, no, again, the, the amount of things, because again, I think they've, again, they, here's the thing, they still insist on using military weapons against Godzilla, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's like, man, you could pump some lead into the, to the Scar King. I'm pretty sure, and here's the yeah. thing too. I feel like Shimu could take it, but at the same time, could she though? I really don't know, because like for whatever reason, like oh, I know the reason why. Like there was no military involvement in that final battle, and obviously the reason why is because the filmmakers just wanted to have an all-out monster brawl in the middle of a, in the middle of Brazil. Well, th- well, that's why that's why I liked um, in uh, King of the Monsters. They still had the military there. Still, you know, firing on Ghidorah. Oh, true, true. You know, giving giving Godzilla a break, or like when Rodan came in, firing on Rodan. Oh, true. Yeah, that absolutely. But it's it's clear. So that, I dug that. I dug that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that would have been great. Even in like older Godzilla movies, the military would still have some amount of presence in these movies. At least the ones that can afford that have the budget to afford to do these sort of things. Um, yeah, the stock footage or what have you. Like what, yeah. even in um, <laughs> Terra Mecha Godzilla, mid- midway through that fight, the military helps out. Right, and appar- apparently this film is the the lowest uh, has the lowest production production budget in the monsterverse, and that does make sense because I feel like not only do you have like no big name actors like on the level of like Sam Jackson, Ken Watanabe, or Brian Cranston or John Goodman here, 
But also, I feel like the CGI in this movie was a step down from the last one. It definitely was a little le- a lot less detailed in certain respects, too. Like, they were a lot more expressive, but there were a lot of very big, empty locations. Right. Like, ma- ha- majority of this movie takes place in Hollow Earth, so I could imagine them saving time and money by just, like, copy and pasting the same tree, rock, boulder assets ad nauseum yeah. until you got yourself... Of you know your hollow earth uh, 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 environment. Yeah. So I will give it that. Like again, some of the areas of words were just big cliff sides. Yeah, and honestly, and, for me and, personally, for me, it kind of. Get, the, oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say for me, honestly, being in hollow earth all that time, it kind of gets a bit monotonous after a while when that's all that you see for the majority of the film, and also it takes. Away, I wanted more wildlife. Yeah, that would have been great as well. Uh, I, like, I, the one thing I want in Hollow Earth, for fuck's sake, give me a goddamn Tyrannosaurus-looking thing or something. Because, like, yeah. that was the whole thing with King Kong. He fought Tyrannosauruses. Right, right. Instead, give you me, get a bunch like, of uh, titan dogs. wolves, and that's it. Yeah, you get dogs. You get another war No, dogs. Doug. Oh, Dugs. yeah, Doug. Doug shows up. The fan-favorite character for some goddamn reason. <laughs> Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like you you see them far from between. You'll see, like, a few of the things just flying around. It's like, mm-hmm. there's no terrestrial animals that are just, like, walking around, too? Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, also, you're telling me Kong's only one? Like, again, I was expecting him to run into, like, a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and that was another thing. This is a complaint that uh, my friend Brayton had told me once that I definitely agree on, having seen the movie myself. And that is, uh, because they spend so much time in, in the Hollow Earth, you start to lose that sense of scale that these monsters tend to have. That too. That, really uh, did. that happened a lot. I, I guess they added the thumping to make it sound loud, but yeah. like... But like once you start seeing totally Scar helped. King and all the other monkeys, it starts to feel less like a Kong movie and more like plan- you're just watching another Planet of the Apes Yeah, movies. no, that, that's why Like, I really was hoping... I really was wishing the Scar King tribe was like 10 or 15 apes. Uh-huh. As opposed to like 50 Right, and then again, you don't see get a sense for of how big they are until they only Scar King is le- Shimu are left, and they, only they get to go to uh, to. Also, to was Suko supposed to be Scar King's son? They were. He was. Was he? No, I'm asking. I, I they don't. don't they don't. They don't confirm this, but um, it's kind of common in 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 a- with apes for the alpha leader to like basically have a harem like relationship with the females. I did notice I said, that I did notice that there was an ape with a baby in, in its arms that was next to Scar King. So I kind yeah, of got several, that idea. There were several of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I so it's very possible that that was like one of his one of his offspring. And Suko ha- also has the same red fur as Scar King. So that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, I assume that Suko. Well, they, they never they never made it a thing though. Uh huh. Right, right. It's never confirmed, so more than likely, you're gonna have to do your homework and read the novelization to get the full backstory on the. Yeah. And on also, the, which I, is I also exactly what I'm gonna do, Andre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of and, course and you really, would. And the relationship basically is just Gohan and Piccolo. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I thought it was charming <laughs> enough. I, I did find it. I, I love the fact that like. He, his, Kong's first instincts is just to like thrash Suko around like a baseball bat. Well, because well, like, hey, bitch, you're gonna fuck around. You know, you're gonna fuck you're gonna with find the bullet, out. You're gonna get the horns. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I would have respected the filmmakers more if they kept Suko as a villain the entire movie, just being this like little shit, like this little like a uh, uh, what's his name from uh, Star Wars, the little creature that la- that laughs a lot next to Jabba the Hutt. Oh, uh... wait. So, so kind of. Because uh, Salacious Crumb. Salacious Crumb. Yes, I wanted like Suko to be like. <laughs> Wait, so uh, kind of like uh, the snitch, the in the movie. Yes, you have that yes. One I w- eight, the, the, that's basically the snitch for Scar King. Yes, I would have respected them if they kept the the cute little baby Kong and ma- can just made him the the villain. Because again, yeah, all this- all all heal. Again, th- th- this is just another part of that Hollywood formula where you got to have the cute, innocent character that eventually gets uh, adopted by the main protagonist. It- it's yeah, like, no, you know, I- Andres, how, are- how else are we going to make uh, money off this? <laughs> That's true. How are we going to make toys? <laughs> we need to make you toys. You dumb idiot. You we dumb boob. Merchandising, where the real money from the movie gets made. We got to sell the cute baby Kong and throw in the little Doug accessory and all this stuff. 
I, I still I can't believe they, they did those, that. <laughs> They're everywhere. Well, I haven't seen them yet. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Was there anything else I wanted to bring up? Like, honestly, I completely forgot. Oh, about oh Super you know what? My, I, 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 have, I have a com- I have a complaint. That's but this has been my complaint yeah. for the MonsterVerse since the first movie. The okay. music has never been as good as the first movie. I, yeah. I'd say it hasn't been as good since King of the Monsters. King of the had good cues, but yeah. other than that, it didn't have its own music. Let's be real. That's true. It didn't. The MonsterVerse fails to have its own identity in terms of its music. And whenever oh, like we hear like any sort of music when it comes to Godzilla, especially from these last two movies, it's always like a, a knockoff version of... The, it's like a, a boot. You're listening to a bootleg version of the Godzilla. Yeah, theme. Godzilla. Godzilla will always have like the da da na na, like, but it wouldn't be the right way. Uh huh. Right. Um. Yeah. There's really that, that nothing... theme is back in this movie because the same composer is back. Uh, Junkie XL was his was the guy's name. He now goes by his birth name Tom Holkenborg, but we all know him as Junkie XL. XL. Oh, okay. So he decided to pull a, a Snoop Dogg and st- or yeah. starts, or a P. Diddy and starts. No, because I have, I, 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 have the, I have the soundtrack. Oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about something else. No, no. I was just saying, oh, he just pulled, like, one of those, like... like... What's his real name? Honky Hunkledark? What did you say? <laughs> um, Hulkenborg, and he's uh, from... Uh, he's Dutch. He's from uh, the Netherlands. Deutsch. He's Deutsch. And he was... I guess, I guess he, was, uh, he was training under Hans Zimmer. What? Well, but, take uh, some lessons. <laughs> take more lessons in this case. Yeah, because honestly, uh, I used to follow uh, Junkie XL's uh, scores and even uh, his ele- his electronica stage. Mm-hmm. But um, he he peaked with Mad Max. To be honest, I've been talking with a few fans. And that's right. Oh, from. yeah, yeah. That's that yeah, was a great peaked. score. Yeah, he peaked with uh, Fury Road because every think if you li- listen to the soundtrack for Godzilla vs Kong. The Snyder Cut, uh, fucking Sonic the Hedgehog, and even Deadpool. <laughs> uh huh. Batman vs Superman, especially his music sounds exactly the same. He he rehashes like the mm-hmm. same harmonies, the same percussion. It's just ugh. yeah. The it's music. Even wor- it's even worse on Rebel Moon because it seems like he just uh. Rebel, well, Rebel Moon's a fucking disaster. <laughs> <laughs> like let's not even so start talking about that shit. That's the fuck. No. Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> Frank won't be having nope. any of that. I I, wa- I sat down and watched it with a friend on a dare. I'm so sorry. You'll, you'll be disappointed to know that I I went to a um one of those uh, Netflix was holding a special 70 millimeter screening for. Red God, went to it. How good is your dick? Not you, the person who made that shit. That he needs like he thinks he needs that. Fuck that guy. He can go. God, no. I'm quitting the podcast. <laughs> I, I sat all the way in the back of the theater, surrounded by Snyder fanboys, Oof. and it it was just it, wasn't. Was it worth it, David? It would have been worth it if the screen was big, but from all the way in the back of the theater, the screen looks surprisingly small. Hmm. And this was at the uh, Hollywood Egyptian Theater, Anders. I don't know oh. if you've ever been. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, no. I was going to say the Grauman Chinese Theater because that screen no, is no, relatively no, 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 no. slow. No, small. Gromit's really? Chinese theater. Their IMAX theater? Oh, it, it's small compared to like how wide the venue itself is. Huh. Because the. Uh... Oh, Wait, when's opinion. the last time you went there? Uh, tw- uh, 20. When did The Last Jedi came out? I saw that in the Chinese 20... theater oh, itself. 2017. 2017, was, uh... yeah. The last time I went there was in, back in 2019 to see Aladdin, and maybe they made some renovations. Man, you just Aladdin don't see the, the movies. Movies. What the heck? <laughs> Dude, that that, that like, was that okay was that was the day before I met uh, Adam Wingard at that Godzilla marathon event at the same Hollywood Egyptian theater uh. before Netflix bought it. Oh, but, your best friend Adam Winger. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to write better villains then <laughs> next time you see him. <laughs> 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 Oh, he does. He does share a, a story credit on this movie. <laughs> now that you mentioned it, great. Now, I, now I have more of a reason to blame him. <laughs> he, he, he didn't write the script, but he did have a hand in the story, along with uh, uh-huh. Terry Rosio and Simon Barrett. So he's like, okay, guys. Yeah, no, they we, just really. What if we got another monkey, guys? How do we top another, uh, our our big monkey? 
even bigger monkey. <laughs> even smaller monkey. <laughs> we we get bigger monkey and smaller monkey. And then we and have fire monkey. lizard with ice lizard. <laughs> and then they go to Brazil. It's so true. <laughs> That's literally this movie. Like, I remember... Like, here's the thing. I still enjoyed what I saw. Sure, 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 yeah. And and even for me, it's like, the more I think about this movie, the less sense it makes. But then again, it's like, what was I expecting? I got... I, I knew exactly what I was expecting. Because I pretty much felt the same way with GBK, where it's like, I know... And also, this... it's really hard for this movie to come out right off the heels of Godzilla Minus One. It's never going to live up, yeah. obviously. And, and that's an okay. I gotta bring this up because there are. Oh yeah, yeah. This 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 shit. This shit again. We can all attest. This shit made us all so mad. <laughs> well, for me personally, oh, well, I'm gonna let you explain what what it is because it might be different for me. But there are oh, fans out there that are like, oh, you don't like this. You don't like this movie. Oh, you don't like this movie because it's not minus one, or you don't like this movie. Because you want it to be like minus one, or you know, you're stop comparing it to minus one. And I'm like, that's not what I'm doing at all. I'm this movie is trying to be a big, fun, over the top action fest. And I like big top over the over the top action fest. I love the shit out of, of Pacific Rim. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I feel like a movie like that does what this movie is trying to do significantly better. Heck, like Frank and I this week just saw Robot Jocks for the first time, and yeah, I, yeah, we did. I fucking loved Robot Jocks, and I felt like that was a better experience than what I got out of this movie. Woo. So, so don't you tell me that I don't like it because it's not serious. Mm-hmm. I love dumb, stupid shit. I just have found people. I've just found other examples that have done it way better than this film does. Like I yeah. said, this movie feels just simply like, uh, again, it's a serviceable product, but at the end of the day, it's just a product simply trying to follow the trends of what's popular right now. And for me, it's like, I'd rather watch something like Pacific Rim, where it's trying to do something more unique with an actual, with a creative mind like Del Toro behind the scenes, who knows what he's doing, and make something that is at the very least, for the most part, consistent within its own established rules and universe. Okay. Rant over. <laughs> uh, what were we going to no, say? No, I, I, what were we going to no, say? I agree with you. Um, similar, similar to that, but again, me and, me and David have seen just in the Godzilla comment section of a lot of our Godzilla groups. Yeah. People bitching them. Again, I don't know what it is about our community that we have to wage war. Remember when, like, the Monsterverse was starting and there were Shin fans? Then it was Shin fans versus Monsterverse. I remember 2014. Now there were 2014 haters versus 2014 supporters. There were yeah. 2014 feet haters, 2014 feet lovers. <laughs> those people are gross. Um, but no, it's, well, it's really one of those things. How that, dare guess, you our, kink shame us? Right our, now. Our, fan, our fandom doesn't know what it, it I think I said this in our last fucking podcast. Our fandom doesn't know what it likes, yeah. doesn't know what it wants, and hates any type of change, but <laughs> demand it furiously. Re- well, fucking remember, what was it? Uh, even with... Uh... Singular the point, last Jedi? point. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, the last Jedi is like that, but on a big. It's like what's of this nonsense, but on a much grander <laughs> scale. <laughs> yeah. But I was just going to bring up Singular Point, where that was another thing, where it's like, oh, this movie's dumb, boring, pretentious, and if you like it, you're dumb, boring, stupid, and pretentious. Yeah, but it's also like, I mean, no smart, we no understand, fucking, my like Singular Point. Hmm. <laughs> I much prefer the cohesive story of Hadiki Ano. <laughs> <laughs> that man is a man who makes sense. Indeed. <laughs> Even though half of the shit is like made up. I meet my dad. Or, or, or a lot of it is glorified Ultraman fan fiction. Yeah. Which is like, man, even he couldn't make it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I thought the ones going to say that. <laughs> How dare you, you you criticize our Lord and Savior Anno? Well, Don't you know oh, he no, created no, the universe? Lord, he created Anno. all everything and everything that's involved in entertainment. Now I have a complex for redheads. Uh, uh, Anno invented Godzilla. Anno invented Gundam. <laughs> He is the that we ever wanted. Everything that has ever existed before Anno and after Anno has ripped off Anno. It's so true. <laughs> 
But yeah, um, but no, it's it's the discourse within our fandom is fucking disgusting sometimes. That's why I I barely pay attention to any of it. It's just not worth my time personally. As you should. <laughs> That's why I prefer my discourse with you guys. <laughs> Yeah, because we're level-headed little smart boys that have good opinions and the only opinions that you should ever listen to. <laughs> you got only, that! The only opinions that matter. Have a <laughs> uh, Let's see. Um, anything else about the uh, the movie? Okay, so I did definitely want to bring up another issue that I've had. I know oh, I'm no. full of them. Uh, another issue that I've had with the later MonsterVerse movies, and that was not only... That I mentioned that the animation for this movie felt a little bit like uh, not as good as before, but an issue I've had with a lot of monster mo movies in recent years, uh, especially the MonsterVerse, is that the monsters not only do they not convey well with this movie, this that that fail to convey a sense of scale, but yes. also a sense of weight to these monsters. They move at incredible yeah, they're, fast they're becoming a. They're coming a lot like the Transformers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's another issue with the Transformers that I notice here is that lack of weight, um, lack of scale. And it's. I find it so funny that this has been my, my recurring issue between GVK and GXK that by the end of the movie, we literally have no weight resulting in what is, in my opinion, the stupidest fight I have ever seen in a monster movie where Kong, what? Shimo, Scar King, they're all floating around weightlessly for, for like half the climax. And I'm like, just like la laughing to myself thinking like, how funny is I thought, that? I, here's the thing, I'll, con I'll concede it was dumb, but at the same time, it was pretty dope. <laughs> it was pretty dope. Like, you can't tell me that you were there stone-faced not being like, this is the coolest shit ever. Oh, man. It, 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 may be, it may be unique, but it's got nothing on Robot Jocks' chainsaw dick, all right? That was cool. chainsaw dick. See, there was no chainsaw dick. Re from Robot Jocks, remember? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, he did have a chainsaw dick. Yes, he did. See, that's that's the level of stupid creative stupidity that I'm not looking for personally. I guess. You see, it's got no. It's he. You heard it, his feelings, Andres. <laughs> yeah, he I'm knows what I'm right talking here. about. That, that, was, <laughs> that was a glorious moment right there from Robot Jocks. It was good though. Um, uh, let's see. And another thing I want to bring up is Mothra's involvement in this movie because from the various reports that we've heard, originally Mothra was supposed to be this original character called Phos Phosphora. Oh, and... hey, yes and no, because uh, we, we heard just, we uh, we he confirmed uh, the the real story behind that a week ago. So what does he say? Because I've got evidence to to to, to say otherwise. And I have no evidence. I'm just going to say that thing so he said dumb that, as uh... shit. <laughs> and I'm just going to yell, <laughs> yell loudly enough until I'm right. Yelling, <laughs> yelling, I'm yelling. Go ahead. So he said that uh, Mothra was always the plan. She's been there since the first draft, but nope. they didn't have the nope. rights to Mothra going nope. into post-production. <laughs> So Yo, they had to easy, use a placeholder easy, character. Easy, let talk. <laughs> they, they had to use that placeholder character, Phosphora, until yeah. the rights were secured. Uh huh. So, from what the stories that I've heard, Phosphora was indeed in um, the a cut of the movie that was screened to test test audiences, and test audiences, a lot of them being Godzilla fans, hated Phosphora and demanded Mothra to be in the movie. And if you look at that, that was also I wonder if we'll get the, footage he said of that. that, was that, that never happened. There was no, you know, poor response to it. Sorry, uh, David, can you repeat what you just said? Wingard, he he refuted those um those claims that um Phosphora mm -hmm. tested poorly. He said the the fact of the matter is that they just didn't have the rights yet. And uh, what were you saying, Frank? Oh no, I was saying like I, if there was footage, I would love to see it. Same. I, out of curiosity, I would be interested in seeing it. Granted, I don't think Phosphor is all that interesting of a looking of a of a monster. But um, also, if you noticed, any time Mothra's name is mentioned, it's either ADR'd, like said by characters off screen, or it's. I did not notice that. Or the few times that a character is on screen saying Mothra's name, it's like a it's from an obvious reshoot, with I believe. Uh, uh, Dr. Andrews, either Dr. Andrews and maybe one other actor, they were brought back to do resh reshoots, and it would always be them in like um, in like a profile shot with no other characters around them. Mm. And second, that's, this one, that's interesting. 
Second, this was also pointed out to me by my friend Steve, and that is when you look at the uh, that scene where they enter this little temple and they see these um, hieroglyphs of all of where Dr. Andrews then goes into exposit uh, Scar King and Shimo's backstory. In that shot, I'm sending this to you guys on, on Facebook, here you would see the hieroglyph that has Phosphora on it. And then when they eventually zoom in on that hieroglyph, it changes immediately into a hieroglyph of Mothra. It's one of those like very blink and you miss it details where you still see the Phosphora hieroglyph inside that temple room. Hmm. You see, the problem with the Phosphora and Mothra is that they Phosphora looks like Mothra, but with smaller wings. And with like Less... weird, weird humanoid type features. Yeah. Right, right, and all, and all, and also with Mothra's fucking face. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you, I'm not sure if you're seeing that, but it has yeah. like Mothra's weird bug eyes. It it does kind of. It's a like I said, I'm not species. a fan of. I'm not a fan of phosphor design at all. It's just a very weird looking bird man Garuda. It reminds me a lot of Garuda from that one random monster movie from South Yeah, Garuda. Asia. Yeah, it's called Garuda. Yeah, yeah. The problem with this screenshot is that it's so low res that a lot of details right. can't be made out. I mean, out. what do you expect? It's from a cam rip at this at It's this from time. a cam rip? Uh, well, how do but you think? Well, the movie's obviously... Did this come from an iPhone or a, or a Samsung? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, bitch. when the movie how eventually gets released... How do you think? When the movie eventually Bandit gets released... <laughs> <laughs> when the movie eventually gets released on Blu-ray, then people will be able to hope see get a better look at that set design. Unless, but, unless they do what a lot of these studios have been doing is and altering digitally altering shit for the for the home video release. Even Toho's done it with Shin Godzilla. That that's that's a very that's a strong possibility. But yeah. uh, but I know what I saw. Damn it! <laughs> You're lying. I'm, I'm, I'm just like I'm, I'm up there at Adam Wingard. I'm turning into like Brian Cranston. You're lying. You're hiding something, and I have a right to know. It killed my wife. Something Andres, killed my uh, integrity. How, how many times have you seen the movie? By the way, once. And that's all. The, uh, that's the only. That's all. As as much as I needed to see from that movie. I've only seen it once, but I want to see it again. Maybe, I saw maybe, it twice on its opening weekend, and maybe this boy needs to see it again. It changes no, tune. Never, no, I, I, I refuse. That, 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 that's the advice I give to a lot of people: that if you see something that you feel mixed about, see it a second time. Because <laughs> give it, them it your, give them more mind. of your money. Yeah, that's the solution. Yeah. Or, <laughs> give the corporations more of your mo hard-earned cash. I agree. <laughs> I did like that. Speaking of Phosphor and Mothra, I did like that Mothra was her traditional colors again. I did, I did like that. I thought the design, the re, the slight redesign, was an improvement. Although I was, well, this one was more golden, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I remember a fan or a friend once. It looks like those. It looks like those weird photoshops we got way back in the when when the people were teasing it. Right. Our, that? Yeah, yeah, that fan art. People were sharing around that oh, fan where, art. Where she had like tri wings. Right. Oh, I'm oh. Posted, I think that might in the chat. That okay, yeah, because I think I know a friend of mine might have drawn that way back when. If it's what I'm thinking oh. of, it's in the chat. It's in the Facebook chat. Yeah, uh, I remember. Let's this see. This is this. this is oh no, no, okay. Like... My friend did not make that, but I definitely remember seeing so many uh, back in uh, uh, thumbnails day, with like, this like posts. No, yeah, these are like 2014, and then people would like you know like take a picture of their monitor with it, be like, oh, it's from the theater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, one thing I thought was really weird and confusing was how when Gia summoned Mothra, Mothra just magically shows up out of, like, some golden pixie dust, and I was like, I'm sorry, what just happened now? Was Look, it Mothra? Yeah, and, that was, was it... that, that, that one was a little weird that there was no chrysalis, there was no egg. Yeah, and, like, they did establish an egg at the end, uh, during the, uh, ending credits of God, King of the Monsters. But like I mentioned before, this movie, this franchise just makes shit up as it goes along. But they apparently, according to, to, to what I've heard... We're getting this, close to magic. I know it. This is probably going to be explained in, in the novelization, but apparently when Mothra died at the end of King of the Monsters, she exploded into, into fairy dust. And this is her essentially being reincarnated from that very same fairy dust. 
how fairy and why i don't know all. i'm gonna call you a fairy just because what else are, are you, are you going to call it no, but, uh, but the, the the thing that's getting me is that the fairy dust made it to the Hollow Earth? Yeah. Exactly. It, again, it's just shit just happens in this movie for no fucking reason just other than fuck you. That's why. Yeah, but I got a big I got but I got a big Godzilla popcorn bucket. So there. <laughs> <laughs> that's so the only thing that matters. It wasn't like the Dune pussy. <laughs> what? Like the Dune, uh, the Dune Sandward pussy thing. The, oh you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that. No, I, just, I, I was making sure I, that's exactly what you said. It's like, okay, you did just say that. <laughs> you fucking freak. <laughs> I wanted that popcorn bucket, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, it was, yeah, Imagine it. Danny was using it. D- D- David, do you remember from the old SOS days? We had this like stupid running gag of the Godzilla fleshlight. Oh God. Oh. Imagine they made a popcorn bucket with just Godzilla's mouth that you like to reach into his mouth, and imagine all the memes that would have come out of that. Yeah, that it's gonna happen, Andres. It's gonna happen one day. <laughs> you've done, you've done this to us. <laughs> You're welcome. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was yes. true. <laughs> um. Oh, the other thing I I thought was weird was yeah. when, Not the G- when well aside Bruh. from that obviously, <laughs> uh, Bruh. when when Gia what when we first learn about the Iwi people we learn that apparently the Hollow Earth versions of the Iwi people which were apparently like the Iwi were always meant to be Hollow Earth people not just Skull Island people yeah but, Skull Island went up right. Uh, which I thought was a very interesting idea, but they established that they were all they all communicated with each other through telepathically. Like, telepathically yeah, even though that's not what was established in Skull Island, Skull Island. where they just um, read each other's body language essentially to communicate. Well, well then I, we don't know. Maybe maybe he was just like maybe John C. Riley's character just didn't say that to them. He's like, yeah, I can hear what they're saying in their brain. I guess, but then it's clear that this was made up just for this movie, and it was never, like, planned since 2017. Um, again, it's an interesting idea, but it's inconsistent with what we saw, what was established before, and I thought it would have been, um, I thought it was more interesting that these characters would listen to, would read each other's body language, speak through body language, as opposed to just using magic psychic powers. I don't know, yeah. I just thought, found that to be a more interesting, it's more grounded, but also more interesting take on these, like, native islands, center of the earth, Atlantis people, compared to what we got here with just, oh, they just talk to each other psychically. And I get, like, without the psychic powers, then Gia wouldn't have got those random visions and wouldn't have been able to reach out to Mothra psychically. They were trying to essentially make her into the the Shobajin, the twin fairies, essentially, for this universe. And uh, yeah. without... The, this this plot relies so heavily on psychic energy, but I just found it to be somewhat of a, like a lazy excuse to just do whatever they want with the story. I think the telepathy thing was added added there to have a more direct connection with Mothra because telepathy is always a thing with that character. Yeah, so I, I agree. I can understand that too. Where it's like mm-hmm. it, it's for me, it just worked with who Mothra is. Yeah. Yeah. In that case, I just wish that I just wish that we would have gotten like a better explanation for how Mothra shows up, as opposed to well, being summoned like a Final Fantasy character. You get nothing, good day, sir. <laughs> yeah, Essentially, that's how I felt watching this movie. It's like, wait, how does this work? Don't 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 ask questions. Just in, you're fucking, in, you're just fucking, enjoy. Was it, it's like so nothing pleases you. <laughs> don't ask questions. Just enjoy. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. To quote Red Letter Media, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. <laughs> um, and then I think there was like one more thing that I wanted to go over, but I completely forgot. Uh... Alzheimer's. Yeah, Probably here it comes. Early onset onset Alzheimer's. Yeah, I'm going I'm going the way of, of Jack Nicholson, unfortunately. The Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> uh, yes, you are sugar gumps. <laughs> yeah, sugar gumps. <laughs> Andres, do you not know where that's from? No, I don't know where that's from. You keep you, bringing up shit just, I don't know you, nothing of. You just I know nothing dropped, of it. You just name dropped the man who said it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jack Nicholson, Batman 89. Oh. When okay. he comes back as the Joker, Jack Palance, he, he thinks that his wife's entering the penthouse. It's actually uh, oh. Nicholson as the Joker. He's like, is that you, Sugar Bumps? <laughs> <laughs> I see. You, you, for, for once, you have my apologies, David. For this I've one and for, only, for this one and only time, <laughs> yeah, I concede. You were right, David. Is that what you wanted yeah. to hear for the last ten years? One, yes. one more time for for Big Fudge. <laughs> no, that that's all you get. No. Just once. <laughs> Dad, stop fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, G G X K, still better than Madam Web. I stare. I said it. Oh, you actually saw Madam Web. Oh, God, no. Why? <laughs> no, he he didn't, David. Oh, God, okay. why, why would I? I have respect for myself and country. But, but uh, Spooder Man. I, I was about to say, t tell us where, where that movie touched you. <laughs> uh, fucking, if, I, if, if I did see it, it would have touched me financially, first and foremost. <laughs> it, touched, it touched my wallet. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh... yeah. How did how did it make y'all feel that the movie was so? It, it it made more of the boxes box office than expected. Um, I think it was ironic watches. That's all I charted up to. Mm. For me, I, I was very curious how this movie was going to perform. Oh wait, wait, uh, this movie or Madame Web? No, oh, this movie. Uh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me turn it out. No, I I'm happy. I was not surprised that people went to go see this one because. After minus one, people really like. I think one, a lot of people realize, oh, people give a shit about Godzilla, and then mm -hmm. people are like, oh shit, Godzilla, I love Godzilla. But then the people are probably being like, that movie was a little hard, a little tough. Minus mm -hmm. one, I miss the goofy ones. When are they gonna make another goofy one? Mm -hmm. Oh shit, the goofy ones here. <laughs> uh, for, for me, so oh, right go now ahead. Godzilla fever is Godzilla fever is hot right now. Mm. I was going to say that I expected it to either flop or be mediocre, but because I was reading the early projections and apparently it was supposed to gross 45 to $50 million on its opening weekend and instead made quadruple that, $80 million. Right, right. I remember seeing those reports as well. Um, I was gonna, I was surprised because I did also thought this movie was going to flop simply because <clears throat> that GVK came out at like the right time and place for a movie like that to succeed. It what came out in the middle of the pandemic, you know, a lot of people or near the tail end of the pandemic and people were really hoping for a nice, dumb, turn your brain off escapist entertainment movie like that, to sort of get their mind off of everything else that was happening around the world at, at the time. Yeah. And so, yeah, it couldn't have been had it been a better time to have watched for audience mainstream audiences to have watched it. And, you know, it resulting in it being like the most successful, arguably, I'm not quite sure, I can say for certain, that GBK was the most successful MonsterVerse movie at that time. And I wasn't exactly sure if GXK was going to be able to replicate that success, given that the circumstances yeah. surrounding its release are no longer the I case. Think, I really think it's because the iron was still hot with Godzilla. Right, and on top of that, I mean, even even mm -hmm. even you know, King of the Monsters, whether you like it or not, mm -hmm. still did well, better than expected. Um, I, I really because I've heard that it uh, it was considered a, a disappointment where it failed. King of the Monsters? It, yeah, King of the Monsters well. failed to meet what was it like no, no, two yeah. and a half times its its goal. Yes, um, King of the uh, yeah, no, he, you're right. Um, King of the Monsters. Well, they never outright confirmed what the break-even point was. Right. For King of the Monsters, but all the reports but, have okay. been saying that it's a it's been a, a a box office disappointment. It wasn't a bomb, but it didn't make as much money yeah. as what it as it needed. Yeah, it underperformed. That's the thing. Or Godzilla vs Kong surprisingly. Godzilla vs Kong did well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it broke even. It managed to it managed to outgross King of the Monsters. Mm hmm. Okay, then. And uh, let's see. With uh, with this movie, yeah, so it does seem like this movie is going to be a success. The only real competition it had was Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, I think is what it's called. But Ooh. apparently that oh, movie... Speaking of... Go ahead. Tanked. Oh, that movie tanked. Um, but also, speaking of that, it was funny that it was two Empire movies. Yes. <laughs> um, also, I don't know if this happened to you in your theater. Hmm. Before our movie started, they showed a trailer for Godzilla x Kong. Oh, not for for me, no. It uh, was everyone in the theater was like making jokes, like, "Oh, we should go see that." But it was so <laughs> weird. Literally, a trailer for Godzilla uh, X Kong 
was bef- was the last trailer to show before our movie started. That is super weird. Did did you see anything, David? Um, not with this movie, but with a few other movies. I remember uh, back in 2017. I went to go see uh, one of those Fathom event screenings for the original Ghost in the Shell, mm-hmm. and they played the trailer for um for the Scarlett Johansson Hollywood remake oh, twice. No, no. Before... <laughs> twice, twice. Dio yeah. uh, But yeah, that that's probably that happened to me, and I remember when I, I went to go see uh, Kong Skull Island in theaters. the The movie kept on shutting down. Mm-hmm. After the first five ten minutes, so we kept on switching theaters until they just upgraded us to IMAX free of charge. That's good. Yeah, at least something came, good came out of that. Like um, an AMC theaters. <laughs> for me, it's like I just remember seeing going through the trailers and just seeing like nothing but remakes and prequels and sequels. And I remember the one that confused and and one A twenty four film, the one that was being memed on because it had like Mary Jane from the MCU in it. Uh, yeah, Civil War. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Oh, I saw Civil War. The one I was thinking it was the the tennis one. But oh, uh, oh, oh, that one, that, that one. one. Yeah, because <laughs> Civil War also has a Mary Jane in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> oh, fuck! You're right. Um, yeah. So literally, I, I literally. Oh yeah, the, the tennis. The, here's the thing. I thought that movie came out like a year ago already. Uh, yeah, I think it might have been like a. It might have been like a film festival type of movie, and now it's getting. A you might be release. right. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but anyways, the the movie that kind of like had me shocked was Twisters, and I was thinking, who the fuck was what? asking a Twister, a sequel to Twister, thirty I did not years see this. later? I did not see this trailer. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. There's there, apparently there's a move. There's gonna be a new Twister movie <laughs> because nostalgia, I guess. People are really nostalgic for the fucking movie there, twister I, I really i really think they're because they've been trying to bring back the disaster movie and it's really yeah. far and few between like there was greenland there was geostorm there was that the movie with the moon i think uh yeah moon, moon rising or some dumb bullshit yeah, i think like uh uh was his name when uh, the moon att- when, when the moon attacks yeah yeah i think roland emmerich had a hand in that yeah yeah moonfall yeah what's that moonfall moonfall yeah yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, that was, it was just dumb. Uh, now I remember the last thing I wanted to bring up, which was uh, it's just it's such such not even that important. It was just you, it's clearly a toy commercial, but fuck God's the like Kong's new power glove, which conveniently was stored in the Hollow Earth base right when they needed it. But yeah, um, that, that that's a, that that part I was figuring like. For me, it was like they had to get the glove on him somehow. It's yeah. a reason to have it on him some reason. So, like, I, I let that go. Yeah, same with Godzilla's new des- redesign. I personally don't like his redesign. I don't care if it's meant to be an homage. I don't to- mind I- it. Go ahead. Oh, I said, I said, I don't mind it. I would have liked him to, I would like him, again, heart of hearts. Mm-hmm. I would love it if he reverted back to his original design somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like, I like, like he, de- like he demutated. Right, right. Uh, you know, I, it's like I, I really don't. People like... finally got their fucking tail club. Yeah, like that. <laughs> um, God damn it! I don't care if it's an homage to Godzilla 2000 or Kaioken, apparently, mm. but yeah, not my definitely not my favorite design. Might be one of my least favorite Godzilla designs, personally speaking. But yeah, that's the it, least. It, it's, it's clearly it a pink commercial. It's, it's a pink, pink. I don't like pink. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. He, um, no, he, my, here's my actual big beef with it, for real. I liked it until he started glowing all pink and purple. Because mm-hmm. then it covered up the design and how neat it was. I think the, my issue with it is that Godzilla's skin tone is like a darkish, like brownish gray. I just think yeah. that color does not work well with pink. Like 2000, Godzilla 2000 works very well because it's very bright green. The green works well with the pink, in my opinion. Like the purples mm-hmm. and pinks more than this do- design with like a brown and pink. That's just I, yeah. I just find it like I, no. Again, I, I see where you're coming from. Again, I again obviously for me I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a purist when it comes to how Godzilla looks. So mm-hmm. it's, for me, it's like oh, it's a super Godzilla look. I hope he can change back. I'm not yeah. pissed by it, but when I look at that silhouette, I don't see Godzilla as much anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's how I felt about 2014's Godzilla. Like, it was mm, Godzilla, mm-hmm. but he wasn't Godzilla fully to me. 
2019 and 2021's Godzilla were Godzilla to me in terms of appearance. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, let's see. So I think that was the last thing I wanted to bring up. But uh, is there any other miscellaneous miscellaneous details that you two would like to cover before we go into final thoughts for this movie? Oh, this movie was very goo heavy. There was a lot of goo. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember. Was uh, there? Yeah, so he, Scylla, the spider. He blows up. He blows up the Scylla spider. Scene. Oh, lots uh, of goo. Um, Kong splits open a wolf. Tons yeah, of goo. That's cuts goo, open yeah. the giant sea serpent. Goo. Goo. Yes. There's a lot of goo. It's very goo heavy. Yeah. You know what? I would have preferred if they actually went, decided to go with straight up like red colored blood as opposed to green goo blood. I feel like, well, the way he viscerally rips them in half, I feel like they couldn't have done that. That's true. That's true. I just wish they had like Mortal balls. Kombat rips their ass in half. <laughs> that's why. No, I was... no. I'm, here's the thing. I'm on your side about this. Yeah. I wish he did that. It was going like, ah, da, 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 like, like lapping up the blood like a psychopath. When, when he, when he, when he, when uh, Scar King gets fr- frozen and then Kong performs that I, sub-zero fatality on him, I was expecting like chunks of red meat and blood to spill out. Yeah. There were chunks, just weren't, they weren't red. And right, that's the thing. It's like, I want that visceral violence though. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it here, folks. Andres requires violence. I deserve blood. He's he's violent. Do you like violence? <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. When, when, when you've read as much Go Nagai shit as I have, you know, you just sort of come to expect more blood. Yeah, you're and, expecting Ghetto Robo levels of yes! like horror. Yes, that's exactly what I'm expecting. You want you want you want that scene where get where Getter Black is ripping that thing to shreds? Fuck yeah! <laughs> we'll never get that, Andres. We'll never get that in our life. It's still real to me, damn it! Look, as long as you don't get traumatized, never mind. I'm not gonna finish that that sentence. <laughs> we'll say it off camera. <laughs> uh, let's see. Any in other this mi- context? Uh, Andres is Ryan Gosling, and uh, violence is his. Uh, what's the name of that Latina chick from, from Blade Runner 2049? <laughs> Oh, uh, I wish I knew. But yeah, I'm like, God meme. damn it. <laughs> that meme. God damn. God <laughs> damn God, it. I swear, I swear to God, I'm not sexist. I just forgot her name. <laughs> Are you sure no. about that? Well, I'm Googling her. I'm, I am Googling uh, Ana de Arms. Armas? I bet, Arms? You if, I bet you if she was Asian, you would remember what the I, fuck? I We're not going to delete yes, this. Yes, you are absolutely <laughs> delete this. right on this. That, that's, that's, another, that's another SOS callback. <laughs> oh, okay. Delete this. <laughs> Stop that man. <laughs> um. So, yeah, no. The, the, yeah, my only other comment is the movie is very goo heavy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any other miscellaneous details you guys want to bring up? I am forgetting right now, but more than likely they will come back up after we finish the recording. Uh, that almost That's happened okay. with me with Kong's glove. All right. Anyways, going to final thoughts. Did you like the movie? David, go. Let's start with no. Start with you first, you motherfucker. Okay. (laughs) So you already established he's the bad guy. Yes. I know. I want to hear his full bad guy rant. Yeah, as the villain. So as the villain of this podcast, um, overall, I have a lot of issues with the film. I just don't find as much enjoyment as others do, but that's perfectly fine. I'm glad people are able to enjoy this movie. I'm glad this movie is doing great. I'm sure that it will lead to more Godzilla products in the future. Um, Regardless of whatever my thoughts are on it, I definitely don't want to take it away from anyone else. Um, It's one of those movies where it's like, if you sit and think about it for too long, or if I, I'm going to, I don't want to speak on anyone else's behalf. If I sit down and think about it too long, which is what we've been doing for the last hour and 40 minutes, then yeah. you do start to notice a lot of stuff in this movie that it does just not make sense or just comes off as very incoherent. But that's oh, for not sure. what... a lot of my, my, a lot of my praises have definitely gone away. Yeah, but it's like, um, it's one of those movies that you're not supposed to think about it too much. You're supposed to enjoy it in the moment. You watch it, you enjoy it for what it is, and then you move on with your life and just move on to other stuff. I think that's kind of like what this movie is. It's, you know, one of those, it's not meant to be a memorable piece of entertainment. It's just pure action entertainment. And, you know, <clears throat> that's essentially what the the point of a turn your brain off popcorn flick is like. It's just for yeah. me personally, I've said this before in the GVK review, and I'll repeat it here. I personally just have become simply burnt out on this type of of filmmaking because that's all we seem to get nowadays from from Hollywood like i mentioned you know Jurassic Park the Bayformer movies the Fast and Furious movies what have you 
And it's why for me, it's like minus one is such a breath of fresh air. Or even, you know, I'm still hoping for another movie like Pacific Rim, less so Pacific Rim Uprising. Um, yeah. And it's just overall, it's like this movie does what it sets out to do. Uh, I can't condemn it for being something for not being something that it was never meant to be and so yeah much like with gbk i enjoyed it at the time that i saw it i saw it but i don't think i'll it's one of those one and done movies for me it's like i'll watch it i enjoyed it for what it was and i just simply just continue on and most most likely never watch this movie again it's one of those until we make you until we make me yes (laughs) in which case you know bring up bring on the bring on the pain or to quote the the dr phil youtube poop prepare for pain (laughs) okay next up david uh, first time I saw the movie, I had very excruciatingly mixed thoughts. I walked out of the theater thinking, what the fuck did I just see? And I had to process it for a few days, and then I saw it a second time, and I enjoyed it. I My verdict is that I enjoyed this movie, but I have to liken it to Godzilla versus Megalon, because I'm Godzilla, mm-hmm. but both films share parallels godzilla is a side character in his own movie and he doesn't add much to the plot all of the characters are plot devices there's a lot of incoherent um logic that was never set up and never brought up never brought up again in later movies it's it, it feels like one of those um movies that you know you're right you see it once and you'll probably never see it again it's kind of like toy story 4 it's an unnecessary sequel but the Godzilla yeah. and King Kong franchises are full of movies that are <laughs> unnecessary sequels. Yeah. So I can't really give it too much shit for that because it's just mm. another one of those type of titles. I, I but, guess, um, for, for, sorry to interrupt you, David. No, go ahead. I, I basically I, finished. Okay. I guess for me, it's like, I know that people have often compared this movie to the Showa era. And I, I guess I'll reiterate a little bit of what I said earlier in the review. But it's like, for me... The style, the, the stylistic execution of this movie compared to something like Megalon, I feel like are just two very different are worlds apart from each other. Like on one hand, you have a movie made in a, like made 50 year half a century ago in another part of the world where the where the filmmakers are left with practically like very little to no resources to make the movie they want to make. And so due to these uncontrollable circumstances, they are forced into making the movie we ended up seeing in the form of Megalon or whatever show a movie people want to compare this to. Meanwhile, you look at a movie like GBK, GXK, they have all, literally practically like, you know, a, a million times like limitless resources at their disposal compared to, you know, the people from, you know, 50 years ago in, at Toho. And yet what we have the final product we he- we have here is not a matter of a movie being made under circumstances where they were forced to make it this way but rather they actively mm-hmm. chose to make it this way and that's where whoa. it's like whoa that's where, where i feel like i cannot ever make the comparison for me personally because i just feel like coming from andres will never forget us rounds <laughs> it's just two it's minus just like, one you're like comparing apples and oranges at that point for me personally i just when i look at this movie i do not see late showa era godzilla i just see modern hollywood godzilla Anyways, I can see that. I'll, 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 end there. I'll stop Boo. being an asshole from now, from from here on out. Boo! Stop having critical opinions <laughs> on your own. No, I, 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 it. I can I can see that because after the Avengers, you're right. Um, a lot of uh Hollywood studios tend tended to imitate um the that Joss Whedon yeah. style. Of, Whatever's popular at the uh, moment. Yeah, yeah, it's common. They they try to turn uh, Star Trek Beyond into Guardians of the Galaxy, according to Simon Pegg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, one successful hollywood film kind of influences another mm-hmm. oh yeah no they they try to they try to really turn these well again one of my great favorite well not favorite movies but like um what was it called uh was it like lights out not lights out um what is the one it's one where they, they break into that guy's house and he's like blind mm. oh uh, breathe yeah breathe they made a fucking sequel to that shit where he's the hero? It's like you didn't need to franchise this. 
But you, you know, Hollywood will milk out, will milk any cash cow they potentially see. Yeah. The so, funny thing, the, this this is another reason why 2014 is one of my probably my favorite film out of the MonsterVerse. Mm -hmm. It's one of those rare Hollywood movies that sticks out like a sore thumb, yet it wasn't imitated afterwards. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I'll get, I'll definitely give credit for Gareth Edwards for at least trying to do his own thing rather than trying to copy anyone else. For sure. Um, yeah. Wait, it's my turn. Is it my turn? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's your turn. Go ahead. My turn. My turn. My right turn. Right into it. <laughs> um, so my final thoughts. I think I can echo both the pros and negatives of this. I think contextually for me, I really enjoy this. I saw it with my best friend and my girlfriend. Um, we really enjoyed it because we've been going through all the MonsterVerse movies and the, the old school Godzilla movies. It definitely had its own charms, its faults. Would I say this was a good movie? Absolutely not. Was it a fun movie? Of course. It had moments that were cool that I definitely want to rewatch once this movie comes out. But I think I might be in the same camp of a, that I swear. As much as I liked it, I don't see myself seeing it again. Unless I saw it with my dad, but even then, it's mm -hmm. like... Like GVK was like, like that again, contextually, that was like, movies are back. We can go see movies again. My hero's back. Cool. Mm -hmm. You know, this Similar one was. Returns. Yeah, this one was fun, but I think it's because there were so many reveals and like big twists and shit where it's like, I don't know if I could have the same level of like, I'd still enjoy it, but the same level of like, whoa, factor would not be there as much as it was for like GVK and stuff. Like the 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 um the stakes weren't as good, in terms of like mm -hmm. rewatching it for the plot. Because mm -hmm. at this point, because uh -huh. now watching this one, it's like I want to just get to the monster fights, which there was plenty. I mm -hmm. I enjoyed my the amounts that I got, mm -hmm. but like with GVK, I really enjoyed the plot points and the way the structure of the film went with the journey from Kong going from his home island to the Hollow Earth, like you know home base. And Godzilla following him and all this stuff. Like, that worked for me. This one really had more of a... Well, these things are sort of about to happen. We're just kind of going to get get you there. We don't go there with them. They just sort of happen. At least right, in right. terms of where Godzilla's journey ends up. But mm -hmm. I still enjoyed it. But, yeah, it really was like... This one is more of like... I want to see the action scenes nowadays. Oh, sure, Where sure, GDK yeah. is like I, do, I did like... I did like the plot more. Mm-hmm. All right. But I liked it. Overall, I'd say I liked yeah. it more than I disliked it. Cool, cool. And that's that's great to hear, man. So, yeah. So, there you have it, folks. That is our review of Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. Thank you for uh, for joining us in this trip. So, to round things out, where can people find you, David? They know exactly where to find me. <laughs> in the hollow -er earth? Maybe. What, what, what What's the name of that? Uh, the hollow earth before the hollow earth in Monarch Legacy? Oh, oh you're, the, you're, you're asking the wrong person here. Oh, it was like, oh well, you never finished it. It was like Limbo or something. Yeah, but basically, but... Yeah, I can uh, imagine. Uh, they, they, never, they know where to find me. I'm everywhere. I have multiple <laughs> accounts. Yeah. And where can people find you, Frank? All right, if you'd like to find me, you can find me over at my cosplay page, which is 8 Armed Spidey. That's the number 8, A-R-M-E-D-S-B-I-D-E-Y. And for everything podcast related that I do, I am the basically social media manager for This Is Rad Podcast, which is This Is Rad Pod on Instagram and on the Twitters. Also, if you like horror movies, I host a little horror show called The Graveyard Shift with my good friend Amy Trelay over at The Graveyard Sh Shift, which is the show we host. But that's over on the Everything Is Scary Network, which is Everything Is Scary on Instagram and at Pod Scary on the Twitters. So if you want to check me out and all the things I do, please do so. Um, and that's all my plugs. All right. And of course, you know, I have written and self-published several comics and books at this point, have a lot of uh, collaboration, collaborations out there. So if you'd like to know any of the latest updates concerning all my uh, creative endeavors, you can follow me on Facebook at Primal Warrior Draco Azul, on Twitter at PW underscore Draco Azul, and of course here and on Instagram at Kaiju Noir. I'm currently working on a big collaborative uh, project, a, a crossover, Kaiju crossover webcomic called Gurel versus Sleep Near, in which the uh, characters from my comics play a big part in that story that I also helped uh, co-wrote and edit. Uh, we have new pages coming out on Webtoons and Tapas every Friday, so look forward to all of that. And of course, I will make 
uh, updates concerning that project as well on the social media projects listed before. And of course, when it comes to this YouTube channel, now that I'm here in good old C, I've moved, uh, relocated here to Seattle. Um, really uh, excited to get back into YouTube, doing YouTube stuff again maybe uploading some projects in the near future, some of which may include the three of us. I wonder what that could be. So look mm. forward to all of that and more. So until next time, everybody, I have been Andres Perez, a.k.a. Kaiju Noir. I've been Gorzard, not Gorizard. And I've been Frankie G, a.k.a. And I'm Spidey. And until next time, everybody, take care. Peace, bitches. The science is sound? The science is most definitely sound, my friend. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>